All right, welcome to part three of our Synchronia tutorial series. We're going to be talking about how to set up TypeScript with Synchronia and ServiceNow. So as we talked about in the last two videos, which of course you'll need to watch those to be up to speed for this one. In the last two videos, we talked about how to configure Synchronia and uh, set up with modern JavaScript and how to push things into ServiceNow. And now we're gonna take that just a little bit further. So uh, if you remember from before, we installed a plugin called Babel plugin. And for TypeScript, we're gonna need another plugin to uh, make it work. And that is gonna be the TypeScript plugin. So to install that, we're gonna do npm install dash d at synchronia slash TypeScript plugin. Okay, so that's installed. So now we're able to add that to our config. So uh, let's go back to sync config.js and let's take, let's minimize this one. And we're gonna add a new section here for TypeScript files. That's going to match on uh, .sn. Actually, let's take this out of this section. It needs to be in the rules. So .sn.ts for TypeScript. Inside the dollar sign, so it matches the end. And let's do our plugins. So for right now, uh, we're just going to set up our TypeScript plugin. So at synchronia slash TypeScript plugin. So if we do that and then set the options to just nothing right now. Uh, that allows us, so now we have a setup where we can do TypeScript with SNTS files. So if I do, if I start up npx sync dev and rename this file to script.sn.ts, I'm just going to replace some of this stuff And we're gonna do TypeScript. So in TypeScript, you can tell, uh, basically you can say what type of var like var uh, variables are gonna have or arguments to functions. Let's do a const test one, which is gonna be a string equals that. Okay, so you can see this is valid because this is a TypeScript file. And uh, you can see that it pushed. Now, one thing that we need to do before we get too far with this is we need to uh, set up a tsconfig.json file. So if you have TypeScript installed uh, globally like I do, which you can do by npm install dash g TypeScript. If you do that, it'll run install TypeScript globally. So I already have it installed, so it didn't take very long. This, this gives you the tsc command. So if I do tsc dash dash init, it's going to create a tsconfig.json file, which is basically just a generic settings file for TypeScript. And we're going to want that before we get too far. Okay, so I let's turn back our dev mode back on. And let's go ahead and save this. And you can see, okay, it's pushed. So let's check what, what happened in service now. So our test one, okay, so it's just a variable string, right? So it took out the types. That's kind of the generic, like the takeaway here. And what happens if I try to put a number in here? Well, okay, I'm getting some red squigglies telling me that's not okay. What, what happens if I try and save it? Oh, it failed to push. Well, that's because we're getting some TypeScript errors in here. And, uh, that's not, so it's saying, we're saying, okay, test one's a string, but we're trying to set a number. That's not okay. So let's change it back to a string. And there we go. So that's cool. But uh, what happens if I try to like import stuff? Well, if I import stuff right now, it'll try and use require from Node.js. So we're not gonna wanna do that. 
So instead, what we're going to want to do is we're going to set up uh, TypeScript to check our files and then also to allow Babel to transpile our files like it was doing with modern JavaScript. So let's go over how to do that. So we got these our, our SNTS extension set up with the uh, TypeScript plugin, but now we don't want TypeScript, the compiler, to basic to uh, convert our files. We want Babel to do that. So what I'm going to do is set the transpile option here to false. So that's telling the TypeScript plugin to only check the types, but but not to transpile our code. And then in the plugins array, I'm going to add a new plugin, and we're going to copy and paste the plugin setup that we had for modern JavaScript. So this gets us pretty far. Uh, there's a few things that we're going to want to change here. So uh, we're going to keep all this stuff, but we're going to add a few extra pieces. Uh, so to do that, we need to do an npm install uh, for these new pieces. So we're going to do npm install dash capital D, and we're going to install at babel preset TypeScript, and we're going to install at babel plugin proposal class properties and at Babel plugin proposal object rest spread. So we're going to install those really fast. Okay, so those are installed. So we're going to put those in our Babel config. So in our presets, uh, after the Babel env section, we're going to add in at Babel slash TypeScript, which will make it uh, handle TypeScript better. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add those other two plugins that we set up. So at Babel slash uh, proposal class properties and at Babel proposal uh, object rest spread. Let's save that. Okay, so we got that set up. And let's try importing something now. Import test to from and then we need to tell this to allow JS. So we can import our JS file. And then let's try doing something a little bit more complicated here. So we're going to call our test func from the previous video. And let's start our dev mode and so we can get this built up. And then let's see what happens in ServiceNow. So if I do, actually, is this going to work? I guess we'll find out. ServiceNow experiment, here we go. Yes. So we, um, we imported successfully our tests to class and called it and called test func. So our setup is working. OK, so that's working pretty good. Let's try something else. So let's do a class here. Sort to export default class uh, test one constructor. Let's do a gs.info and just say hi. Okay, 
something's not working here. What is it? So if you mouse over here, you'll see it can't find name GS. So TypeScript doesn't like that there's this GS variable that's just declared and we have no idea what it is. And you'll find the same thing happens if we try to do like a new glide record. It just doesn't know what we're talking about. So what can we do to get around that? So there's another package that we can uh, install called ServiceNow Types. So you can get to that one by, let me just scroll up here, going to GitHub and going to Nivolo ServiceNow Types. And it gives us a handy dandy command here to install it. Let's install it. Okay. So, okay, so red squigglies are still here. So what do we do? We need to import ES from at nuvolo slash service now types. And we get rid of this glide record call. And you can see now that we have gs.info and it knows that it's glide system. So let's start our dev mode back up. And we'll save and we'll see that it's pushed. And then let's go back to our service now instance. And let me change this to say new test one, which should run our constructor. And let's see what happens. Oh, it works. Great. And so now let's do a new thing here. Let's do uh, let's do another function. Let's call it glide test. And let's set up a new glide record. Okay, so you can see that, okay, we don't have a glide record yet. So let's add a comma here and type glide record. And you can see we got glide record here and it's mad because we're not passing it an argument. And so that's working. So what happens now if I like store this in a const IGR equals new glide record. So if I do glide record that, and then now it's suggesting all these things here, but that's not what we want, my GR. My GR dot, and look, we've got suggestions for all of the glide record methods. So I could do dot query in here, and my GR dot next in here, and now TypeScript's totally okay because we have this magical package. Uh, by the way, if you are using this and something goes wrong or you get some unexpected behavior, please uh, submit a pull request or a issue to the ServiceNow types repo. We want these types to be ac as accurate as possible. We're trying to use them in production of our own code. So please feel free to contribute and use uh, some of these awesome tools that we've created. With that said, uh, we've got TypeScript set up. We've got modern JavaScript set up. And we are well on our way to using uh, many modern development practices in ServiceNow. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, were able to uh, learn a lot. And thank you for your time.